I was honest mess about doing that. Hello and welcome to Cooking with Goldbridge. We're back with one of the easiest and most versatile dishes there is in your cooking armory. It's beans on toast. It's not beans on toast. I'd love to do beans on toast. It'd be so easy. Goldbridge cooks beans on toast. But no, we're going to do on this Easter weekend, we're going to do a traditional Easter dish. We're going to do spaghetti bolognese. We're going to do spaghetti bolognese, the most vibrant and versatile dish there is, and it's relatively easy to make. And there's lots of different combinations. You can play a 4-4-2, a 4-3-3, a diamond formation. I'm joking, but you can do quite a lot with spaghetti bolognese. And for me, I put bacon in that, you know, maybe that. But I think this is the best. I'm, look, I'm, I love lasagna. I love a bolognese. I think, in a, you know, in a footballing sense, a spaghetti bolognese to me, it's like Bruno Bolognese. Bruno Fernandes isn't in it, but he eff it effectively is, look, he's a number 10. He's an attacking midfielder, spaghetti bolognese. But what you can do with that bolognese, you can put it in a pepper, you can put it with rice, you can put it in a wrap, you can have it with chips. You can, there's so much you can do with bolognese. And like Bruno, you can put him CDM if you want, you can put him on the wing. He's gonna do a job for you, but bolognese goes with spaghetti. Spaghetti bolognese, it's a fantastic dish. And I tell you what, it's gonna be lovely. It's gonna be lovely. I think I've had, the, the main thing for me about a spaghetti bolognese is you don't want it too watery. I hate a watery spaghetti bolognese. You want it nice and thick and flavoursome. And that's what we're going for with this recipe today. Now people, are, I, can, I can hear people screaming, I can't, there's only a dog in here and it's asleep. It's probably thinking it. Why are you doing an Easter dish for Easter? Because I don't like Easter. I don't like Easter. For me, Easter is the Brighton of the Premier League. There's nothing wrong with Brighton. It's got to peer. Potter's doing a great job. But the reality is, I'm not a big fan of Easter. It is the worst of the uh, religious celebrations, as far as I'm concerned, or the holidays. You know, I put Christmas number one, probably Halloween two, bonfire night three, Easter, I mean, you probably make it into the top five because I can't think of many others, but not a big fan of Easter. I just find it a little bit dull. You know, it, I do. And I, I know the religious connotations are to do with the Easter bunny and Jesus, but on a serious note, I don't want to upset religious people. I know what Easter's all about, Holy Week, um, the resurrection of Jesus Christ, um, but it's just not a very interesting story as far as I, it was an interesting story, it's just not an interesting break as far as I'm concerned. Um, I'm, not a big, I'm not a big fan of it. So um, I thought, you know what? Screw your leg of lamb, screw your Easter egg cheesecake. I'm doing spaghetti bolognese and that's what we're going to be doing today. So what will be involved in this? Well, we'll be, be involved in cooking a spaghetti bolognese, of course, but we're gonna have red wine in it, passata, sun-dried tomatoes, obviously Parmesan, puree, stock, onions, garlic, bacon, and mince. Not a lot, and obviously spaghetti, which I've bought from the shop. I'm not making my own pasta. But yes, quite a process to go through, which we'll go through next to the cooker. But I'm looking forward to this one, and I think it's gonna be nice. So join me over by the fridge, the cooker. Imagine cooking in the fridge. Okay, we're back in action. We've got the bit, we've, what we've done is we've put the chopped bacon in now. It's in, it's in on its own. And as you can see, I've took the browned beef and I've put it in a bowl. That's gonna come back in later because we're all about building lots and lots of flavors. This bacon, I'm not gonna do David Attenborough. This, this bacon, this bacon, this chopped bacon used to be a pig. Um, anyway, it used to be a pig. It's now still a pig, but it's in my pan and it's being cooked. Chopped bacon is being cooked in there. We're frying it with a little bit of little bit of olive oil, a little bit of olive oil, um, and then we're going to add the onions in in a minute and brown them. And we're starting to build our textures now. I'm just thinking, actually, I'm going to talk about gaming. I will get onto that. I'm sure you can't wait. But I was just thinking, at Christmas time, there's loads of Christmas songs. Slade, Wizard, and there are more. But Easter doesn't really have many songs, does it? And I thought, I'll tell you what my favourite song for Easter is. Stone Roses, I Am The Resurrection. I am the resurrection and I am the light. I don't know whether they would, I doubt very much, they were singing about Easter. But if they were, maybe they should be playing that over the Easter weekend like they play Christmas songs at Christmas. And don't say it's disrespectful. Bloody Slade is singing about having beer with his gran. It's nothing to do with Jesus, so yeah, I think that's a great song. 
Uh, anyway, that bacon's moving fast. I think, I think I've got to drop it down to a lower heat here. So I'm going to. But uh, I'm going to get the onions and then we're going to talk about... And then he said we're going to talk about gravy. I mean, I've got chopped sun-dried tomatoes there and I've got my chopped garlic there. But at this stage, I'm only putting in the onion. This is something you've got to try. You've got to try this dish. You've really got to try it. It's brilliant. And the thing is, even if you don't like spaghetti pasta, the bolognese sauce is fantastic. You could have it with chips. You could have it with uh, toast. You could have it in a stuffed pepper. Don't have it with a curry. That would be weird. Don't, I love curry, I love bolognese, but don't put them together. It just won't work. So we're gonna brown these onions with the bacon for about three minutes, which gives me a little bit of time to talk about gaming. I've got, I've got back into gaming recently. I've been playing a bit of Grand Theft Auto, a bit of FIFA, a bit of Fall Guys. Check me out on Twitch. But realistically, I'm not plugging that. I don't need to. Um, it's growing fine without it. But arrogance aside, the gaming world is such a weird world, isn't it? It made me think about when I used to play a lot of games when I was younger, Mega Drive Massive. And um, there was this game called Sonic the Hedgehog. Well, basically the story is I was playing Grand Theft Auto the other day and I'm playing through, this, I'm playing through the, the rounds. Like, and sometimes I get killed and I have to start again and all that. And some people are like, why don't you just use the cheat codes? And I'm like, do I look like somebody who uses cheat codes in life? No, I'm not, basically. Well, don't answer that. But I don't use cheat codes. And um, it's like a little bit dry, just had a bit of drizzle. But there was this game, I remember. Now, look, I don't know how old most of you are, but if you used to play computer games in the early 90s on consoles, such as the Mega Drive, the Neo Geo, the Super Nintendo, I think the games were a lot harder. Now, the modern youth are going to say you don't know what you're on about, but some of the games, especially on things like the Atari and the Amiga, they were ridiculously hard. I remember having the Simpsons game on the Amiga, and it was bloody, it was rock solid. The novelty of playing as Homer Simpson or Bart soon, soon wore off when you realised how hard it was. But they did used to have these cheat codes. Anyway, it was ridiculous how I used to get them to work. You know, I think, I think on the modern games, the cheat codes are quite easily to, to put in. You know, you press, you press a button, you put a code in or something. On Sonic the Hedgehog, which was relatively easy, but the cheat came out around the same time as the game. If I remember rightly, you used to have to press the A button, up, down, left, right, and then when you heard the ping, you pressed the start button. But it was all about timing. And you'd go to school the next day, because people didn't have phones or anything like that, and you'd go, have you got the code working, the cheat code on Sonic the Hedgehog? And people would be like, no, I've done, I pressed A, I've gone up, down, left, right, and it won't work. Then I pressed start. I got it to work quite quickly, and it was all about timing. I used to just, this exact bit on the intro, you had to do it. And I'd just go right now, up, down, left, right, A, start, bang. And then you could choose whatever level you went and played on. So um, basically, I told this lad that what you basically had to do is you press A, up, down, left, right, you quickly drop your controller, spin around, come back, press start, and it'll work. Because I tried it at home, and, it's, and, and, and it did work. But it obviously was a load of bullshit. You don't need to drop your controller and spin around. But... Um, he did it, he did it, and he came into school the next day and he was like, it didn't work. And I went, which way did you spin round? He went, he stood up and he went. I went, right. I went, now you've got to go anti-clockwise. He came in the next day and said it worked. It's <laughs> just brilliant. Just brilliant. Absolutely brilliant. But, you know what? That is not a bad story about what used to happen with computer games. Like, some of the, some of the, you know, I remember Street Fighter. I remember Street Fighter. It was a really, post, a really popular you know, fighting game. And some of the moves, some of the finishing moves, like you'd beat the crap out of someone and then you want to do the finishing move and it'd be like, you'd have the manual in front of you. Up, down, left, right, jump on the spot, put touch your nose, up, down, left, right, A, B, C, D, up, down, left, right. You know, it'd just be magnificent, ma magnificent complexity to do these moves. And of course, people would do it. Like, I think gaming was probably bigger than bigger when I was growing up than it is now. There used to be, like, programs called Games Master and stuff like that. Millions used to watch it. It was a different time. It really was. Anyway, let me just take that off the heat. So our, our, our bacon and our onions are basically browned. The pan's getting a bit sticky on the bottom, which I don't like, but as long as it doesn't burn, it's fine. So next, that's easy. I'm back. So we're going to add in the sun-dried tomatoes and the pure uh, and the chopped garlic. Now, I am going to put the ingredients in the bottom corner for you all because that will be helpful on a cooking program. But effectively, the beef I've had 500 grams of beef, 
500 grams of minced beef, um, 200 grams of chopped smoked bacon, one whole onion chopped, that's all gone in in the, in the order we've done it. Now I've done 150 grams of sun-dried tomatoes chopped and three garlic cloves chopped and that's what's in there at the moment for a few minutes. So we'll leave that to cook for a minute because I don't want to... Oh, actually I'm just going to keep rolling. Rolling, rolling, rolling. I'm going to keep rolling because why not? This is only for three minutes and I'll, I'll, just, I'll just edit it. Edit there. Okay, back again. Quite a quick turn over there. So we're stirring everything in there. I'm now going to add in two uh, squirts of tomato puree. One, two. I'm going to stir that in for a couple of minutes. And I've got my red wine ready as well because that's going in next. I'm not, you know, cooking for me is not an exact science. Now people might say chef bridge. But really it's laziness. It's nothing to do with, uh, oh, I just know the amounts because I do it so much. I'm just generally quite lazy. That should have been two tablespoons of tom tomato puree in there, but I figure two squirts won't be far off. And I've got to put in um, 200 millilitres of red wine, but I'm just, I'm just gonna guess. At the end of the day, I think it'll work. Now, what we're getting, this is getting, this is looking really nice now. I mean, I'd eat that. That's just bacon, onion, some dried tomatoes, garlic. I bet that's really nice. I'd eat that. Um, but we're just building up that flavour. We're building it up now, uh, which is fantastic. Right, we're going to put that in in a minute. Um, I just, I just, I do just want to say as well. Look, you know, cooking with Goldbridge, going with Goldbridge, driving with Goldbridge, having a crack with Goldbridge, whatever, whatever video I decide to do. They are, they are date stamps in relation in time. Really, we've spoken about lockdown. We've spoken of things like that. And I, I, do, I, do, I do feel that it would be wrong of me not to mention this, even though I've mentioned it a few times, that um, obviously it's been a very sad week in the world of football content with uh, the passing of Claude, from a, uh, formerly of AFTV. Um, so, you know, I just think it's, uh, it's just sad. I mean, as I said, I think the thing for me is I didn't know him that well, but I did know him. And um, to think that we won't see him again doing content, the finality of, of, of uh, these sort of things is hard to... Hard to compute, but as I've said to many people before, whether it's whether it's a human being, a cat, or um, is, there, is there a cut-off point with pets where you don't really give a shit that much? I do remember having a a goldfish die, and I was like, should we, "What should we do with its body? Should we put it, flush it down the toilet?" A lot of people do apparently. Um, I think I think we actually buried it, which you know, I suppose if they, if you flush it down the toilet, buried at sea. It's symbolic of a fish, although I don't think a fish would like to be going down to a sewer, but people do do that. But yeah, I think I've, uh, when cats have died, I tell you what, if that bottle fell and I bang my head, it would be funny. It is quite slippy on there, but I've got good core balance. I've got a strong core. core here's, here's a tip for you. I'm not, oh, I wonder if it'll work here. Right, this is, this, this is weird, right? This is really weird. Um, so, this is apparently true. If you can do this, it, it's actually linked with when you're going to die or something. I mean, not, you know, if, look, let me show you what it is, right? So you get down like this, okay, and if you can get up without using your hands, like, like this, I will, do, I will do it. So if you can get up from a sitting down position without using your hands, just your, your, your core, it shows you've got a strong core, which is your balance, which then ties in with things about how long you're going to live when you get older. It doesn't mean if you can get up from sitting down, you're not going to get knocked over by a bus. It's not, it's not psychic. It just means that your core is good. And if you've got a strong core, it can be good for you when you get older because you're not going to fall over and stuff. Because obviously a lot of old people fall over. Some people say that's stereotypical. I think it's true. Right, let's add the red wine. So... Rose. About 200 millilitres. Put that in. There's one. That's one for Claude as well. Rest in peace, mate. I hope you're at peace. Um, we are going to miss you. And uh, um, just, just a really, you know, going back to what I was saying before, it's a hard, hard week for a lot of people. And look, there's a lot of family and friends have been really hardly hit, hit by this. I know the lads at AFTV have been as well. Um, and it is, it is very sad. But as I've said before, the fact that it's sad to, to me and the fact that it's, you know, 
sad to other people, even a lot of people who've never met him, which I think is, I think that in a way is, is even bigger because it's like these people who've never met the guy, just, you know, really upset. It shows that you care and that's, that's what grief is. It shows that you care. And you know what, maybe I didn't care about that goldfish much, but I've had cats die and dogs and it really has cut me up. And um, I think it's about what you care. And you, you know, you don't know what you care about. You know, I care about um, Mind Hunter. I really enjoyed that series. I loved The Terror uh, on uh, BBC, uh, iPlayer if you want to watch it. And I loved, um, but I don't really care for Bridgerton. Everyone keeps saying watching it, and I've watched a bit of it, and I think it's crap. I don't care for it. If they cancel it after one season, I won't care. But, you know, now they're not doing any mind hunter after season two, I think it's left, it's left it very open. I'd like to see more of it, and it's what you care about. That's what it is. And uh, I think it shows this week that a lot of people cared for uh, Claude and enjoyed what he was doing. And, you know, real, real as well. Not, you know, I don't want to single Claude out at all for this, because... Everybody's got their flaws. Five minutes with this red onion. Everyone's got their flaws. I've got more flaws than the Empire State Building. Um, doesn't mean I'm not a good person or doesn't mean I don't try to be a good person, but we've all, we all have our limits and we all have our demons and we all have our struggles. So, you know, very sad week. Um, and I hope that thing, I, I just hope that it isn't, the, the one thing I really want to say as well is that on Wednesday when we got the news, um, or was it Tuesday, um, there was an outpouring of people saying that the toxicity on social media is disgusting and then, but then you see it coming back, you saw it on the day from some idiots, but then you see it coming back and I just think that people are, you know, we need to be better to each other, uh, that's what we need. That is, uh, that is building into a really, I mean look, it's going to get messy, it's going to get a bit of lean but that wine is now, I can't remember, I can't remember what happens when you put alcohol into food, the food gets pissed, no, I mean I can't remember what happens when you put alcohol into food, I think it, there's a word for it. Putting alcohol into food is not one word. Um, it, I'm, 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 I'm tempted to say dilate, but I think that's something that happened to my wife when the kids were being born. Um, it, something, it, it evaporates but leaves the flavour. I think the alcohol evaporates but the flavour is left. So you end up with this sort of paste, which is why this spaghetti bolognese is going to bang spaghetti bangernaise I'm gonna call it it's gonna bang because we're gonna add the beef back in in a minute and into there we're gonna simmer but we're gonna to have to add some beef stock as well and then we're gonna leave it to simmer for 90 minutes words don't come easy to me they do actually people often say do you not get nervous and panicked when you're cooking I think the more you do it the better you get a bit like sex some might say um, that doesn't mean become a prostitute or, or put it about a bit. I'm just saying, I think a lot of things, it's like shooting hoops, which isn't a metaphor for what I just said earlier. Um, the more you do something, the better you get at it if you apply yourself. If you drift through life, like Arsenal, then you won't end up successful. You know, they play games, but they're not going anywhere, really. They might do under Arteta, to be fair. I just, I just think Arsenal are always good for a joke. But if you drift through life and you don't focus your mind, you won't get better at it. If you go to school and you just turn up and you want to talk about match and football, like I did, you'll come out with shit GCSEs. But if you apply yourself and do something a lot, you'll get better at it. I'm not saying that when you're with your wife or your husband and you've done it a few times, whatever you're doing, um, don't take notes at the end of it and say, you know, it's like that Alan Partridge skit, isn't it? Where it's like, fantastic full English breakfast, Eight out of ten, you know. I want, I'd like the, the sausage to act as a break water for the beans, but I'm, I'm nitpicking. Eight out of ten. No, I don't mean that. Like, you know, God, they won't be with you for long if you get your little jotter out and said, compared to last week, I'd give you an eight out of ten. A little bit more uh, pace this time, and I'd like a better finish. But um, you know, it sounds like Timo Werner. But anyway, let's. Uh, so we're adding in the browned beef here now. So that's lovely. Now I will put in the ingredients in the video description because I think that's always useful. But this is going to be so good as well. You could serve this up with with grass and it will still taste nice. So the, we're stirring this in now. We're stirring this browned beef into our lovely paste that we've generated. Um, but yeah, the more you do it, the better, the more confident you become, really. And uh, 
But yeah, spaghetti bolognese, it's lovely. So that browned beef is now mixing in with our paste that we've created. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna add in, this, we're getting to the simmer stage now, which is the best bet where it's gonna get its flavor. But this is just so thick already. You'd, I mean, I could eat that. I'd eat that in a sandwich. I nearly said I'd eat it out there. No, I wouldn't eat it out there, but couldn't do it. But uh, yeah, I'd eat that out of a sandwich. I'd eat that on cornflakes. I love, I just love lasagna and I just love Italian with proper tomatoes, like like my mama used to make. My mama didn't used to make it. She made a good, uh, she made a good Sunday dinner, but she didn't do Italian food. But um, lovely food. Right, so what I'm gonna add in here is, because we're gonna simmer for a long time, it needs to be liquefied. It needs to have some liquid. So I've got 150 millilitres of beef stock. That's going in. And then I've got uh, a packet of tomato passata, which is basically blended down tomatoes. It's like a, it's like a tin of tomatoes, but it's blended down into a smooth sauce. So that's going to go in as well. Oh, that wasn't me. That was the carton. Sounded like a trump, but it, it, it genuinely wasn't. It was just a comedic sound from a carton of passata. So that goes in. Lovely. Start stirring that up. We're going to turn our heat down a little bit. So it's going to be on a low heat because it's going to simmer. And uh, give it a stir. Oh yeah, lovely. This is going to be, this, you, you are going to say, you know what, Goldbridge, you might be a mediocre football commentator, stroke, content creator, but when it comes to cooking, you're not as bad as I thought you were going to be. Right, get me some Worcester sauce. Where is it? Where's the Worcester sauce? Oh, it's always at the bottom. Why is the thing you always want right at the bottom? It's, like, it's an irritation of mine, that is. It's like socks. It's always at the bottom. Right, we're going to put a bit of Worcester sauce in now. A few drops of that. I do like Worcester sauce, actually. What's, what's my favourite thing to have Worcester sauce on? Steak, yes. Bit of seasoning, bit of pepper, which is also seasoning. Salt and pepper, like Ant and Deck. Don't, don't put them in it though. They'll make it bitter and boring. So there we go. And what I'm gonna do with that now is, as you can see, starting to look like, you could, you could serve that, you could serve that ready to go. That, that will taste absolutely nice now. In fact, I'm gonna taste it just to prove it. Mmm. That is nice, really nice. So what's gonna happen with this now, I'm gonna put the lid on, like that. I'm gonna knock up, knock up the noise, knock up the volume. You remember when knocking up used to mean getting someone pregnant? Might still do, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna get my spaghetti bolognese pregnant. Oh, I remember that scene out of American Pie where he gets caught having a go on the apple pie. Don't do that with your spaghetti bolognese, you'll take your balls off, but um, that is, now we're going to simmer for 90 minutes on a very low heat. Now what will happen is in 90 minutes time we'll, we'll make our pasta, we'll pour that on the top, bit of parmesan, happy days and you're going to get a lovely rich thick spaghetti bolognese and you're going to go Goldbridge that is the best spaghetti bolognese I've ever had, let's see. And there it is in all its glory. It may not look fantastic, but spaghetti bolognese, it's a bit, you know, what, what do you expect? It's, it's pasta and it's the sauce. And as my granddad said to my grandma once when serving up a chocolate mousse that looked like a turd, it's not what it looks like, it's what it tastes like. And uh, I'm, I, I think this is gonna, well, I've already tasted it, it's gonna be very nice. So there it is, spaghetti bolognese in the pan where I've cooked it with boiling water. There's my spag bol, absolutely delicious. Lots of it left. But here's mine, served up, and uh, ooh, tuck in, tuck in. Make sure you smash a like on the video, subscribe, Goldbridge Cook Spaghetti Bolognese. Um, as I said, I mean, spaghetti, it's not easy on the eye, but it's about the taste, and the taste is mm, the best Betty, the best Betty, the best Betty I've ever had. I've never had a Betty. The best spaghetti I've ever had. Thanks for watching.